Hey, we're back one more time. It is the last set of the night that I have to narrate anyway. I don't think I have much of a voice left, but we are going to do my very best. It is my buddy, Jabba the Griffin, the legendary Trainer Orange against Malekith, the second place finisher in Permasan Invitational, and he had a pretty decent SPL as well. Interesting pairing. These are both old, old guys. This could have been a match legit in SPL 10 years ago. But here it is in 2021. Let's see who gets the job done. Jabba, Malekith, round one of Callus Invitational 5. So, Malekith on the bottom, Jabba on the top, Meta and Zap respectively, becomes Bliss on Zap, becomes Breloom on Bliss. Free Spore coming on something. Gonna go for a sub instead, sure. And now he goes for the Spore, which is not lumbed away. And he doesn't have Sleep Talk either, so now Focus Punch coming down, something's gonna have to eat it. And, wow, Scum doesn't take that well at all. 66%, zero chance to live another. Drill pack, so he's got to have Doug Trio, right? There's no other way that he'd... No, he doesn't. He just loses the scarm flat out, and the only thing he does is he gets rid of the sub. Jabba getting a little greedy here, trading Leech Seed for Ice Beam. That doesn't seem overly worth it to me, especially we now see that he has a Fortress, which would have been a pretty safe switch beforehand, so don't know that I love the way that he played the Breloom there. Hidden Power Fire comes down. Four, you're going to live very comfortably and go for the Earthquake. So Java really far ahead in the early stages of this game. Flat out 6-4 to four advantage, 10 turns in. Let's the four you go, so it becomes a 5-4 to four advantage. A lot of unrevealeds in this game, four of them in total, three of which belong to Jabba, and now none of which belong to Malekith as Roar is going to prompt out the last poke, which is, unsurprisingly, a Tyranitar. BP to Swampert. DD Tar, unless it's DDHP Grass, that's not going to go much of anywhere here. And Jabba obviously stays in, goes for the Earthquake. Goes back to Zapdos at this point. It's going to eat a Hydro Pump on the way in. Pretty big chunk, 44% from that pump. Does he have HP Grass? Even if he does, looks like it won't matter here. And he does have HP Grass, but Blissey came in. Probably a BP up from Zapdos. The question is to what? No, he's opting for the Roar. That's going to prompt out the Sleeping Metagross, which has killed one sleep turn here. Who knows when it wakes up? So random with Spore. And Loom going to reappear, so Focus Punches may come down. He better wake up quick. Substitute just in case he doesn't wake. And he's taking a long nap here. Three attempts to wake up, none of which have occurred. Wakes up now. Earthquake pops the sub, but he's going to eat a Focus Punch here. And Breloom hits so damn hard, man. 66% even though it hits him neutrally. And he's going to just put him right back to sleep with Spore. And there's nothing preventing him from focus punching again here. Malekith does not have a Breloom answer on his team. He's very vulnerable to this poke. And there's a dead Swampert. Loom is just a real issue for Malekith. It just, look at his team. Doesn't have anything close to an answer for this. This is obviously a good matchup for Jabba. He loses the loom now, but who cares? It did a ton of work, and Jabba comfortably ahead right now. 4-3 to three with two unrevealed. And Alara spikes down, and the sleeping Metagross, and the dead Metagross. Yeah, this one has been all Jabba. Well, uh, I don't think Malekith can win. We know it's a physical tar, and there's a healthy Swampert on the other side, and then Blissey's not going to win. So I think we're going through the motions here. I think Jabba's going to take this game one pretty comfortably. Well, there's one way to throw. Jabba could have gotten the Swampert sung on, but now that he knows that that's there, he's not going to ever allow that to happen. Sing is going to happen again now, but it's going to miss for a second time. Zapdos being the intended target that time. Thunderbolt. Yeah, I mean, damned if you do, damned if you don't. You stay in, you eat the poison, you don't stay in, then the T-Tar comes in on Thunderbolt. T-Tar comes in for Jabba, so he shows his full team. He's going to try to focus punch here, but that's going to be disrupted by the Sing. Blissey very low. Focus punch attempt again. See if he wakes up here. And he does not. Swampert comes in, of course. Still at 100%. And Malekith at this point has no choice but to try to BS out with a DD-Tar. Find a flinch, find a crit, what have you. He's going to need that or he is going to be out of here. 
Goes for the second rock slide. Looks for a flinch yet again. Does not find it. And we are done here. There's the earthquake. Malik is saying his GG's. Blissey comes in, but not for very long. And going to allow the soft boiled. Okay. Well, he said the GG, but I guess we're going to go through the motions. But it's not going to take long. Soft boiled is going to make this a done deal. And I'm just going to go ahead and switch it to hyper fast because... Yeah, because we're going through the motions. Malik is going to concede. Jabba takes game one. Felt like Jabba was ahead pretty much the whole time in that one. Never really gave up his lead. He went through play-ins and looked really good. And looked really good here as well. Jabba up 1-0 and in great shape to be the second play-in player. Alongside Endel to be in the winner's bracket. How about that? The best any play-in player has ever done, Callus Invitational, is 2-2. Two and two, But if they both got off to the right start with a W, who knows what could happen. Well, off to game two. Jabba with the lead. Here we are again. Same positions. Malekith on the bottom. Jabba on the top. Jinx is going to insta-ice beam from Jabba, but it's going to meet a T-wave, so... Yeah, I guess, I mean, I could see why he didn't lovely kiss, right? Because it lets it lets Malagith pick the target, and maybe Jabba wants to sleep something else instead. But the drawback, the reason why you do lovely kiss there is for exactly what happened. Jinx is going to be almost useless now, now that it's been T-waved. It still hits hard, but I mean, it's so fragile that being slow now, it just, I don't know. It seemed like a good turn one for Malekith. Jinx does not have a lot of purpose here. I mean, gets a lovely kiss off, but it's against Blissey, so who cares? And he doubles to Dugtrio, which is trying to trap the Blissey. This may or may not work here. Yeah, I guess it will. I mean, Ice Punch there would have needed a crit or a freeze. Doesn't get either one, and he'll kill the Dugtrio just as... Or kill the Jirachi with the Dugtrio just as well. I almost would I think I would have lovely kissed again instead of gone to Dugtrio there because if you switch and he did to Jirachi, maybe you sleep that instead. But this works as well. I don't know if it was optimal for Jabba, but it might work. Looking like some kind of special spam for Jabba. Some kind of CM special spam nonsense. And looking like a balanced TSS team. I hesitate to call it TSS because it's not actually spikes. Uh, but some kind of balanced sand team for Malekith on the bottom. So, uh, the the coon on this team can vary a lot. It can be combine three attacks. It can be combine substitute two attacks. It can be just traditional bulky coon with roar. It can be crow coon. And there's just a lot of variants of what the coon can be on these CM spammy teams. Dugtrio sneaking in on Bliss. Interesting. Can't kill from 77% without a crit, but is going to attempt anyway. I don't know that I like throwing away the Dugtrio there if I'm Jabba. Doesn't it still... I mean, it's it's a tempo play. It makes the Blissey switch out really low, but doesn't that... I don't know. You, I thought it still had use against the Tyranitar later. I don't know that I would have thrown away the Dug there if I'm him. But that's what he did. So it leaves us in a 5-5, five to five, and there is still a hidden poke in the back. Going to go for Psychic here and get T-Wave. There's quite a bit of para spam going on for Malekith, but this obviously hits a natural cure poke, so it's not as big of a deal. Rest coming down, and Giga Drain over prediction for Jabba from what seems to be a Super B. Last move HP Fire, I would think. It could be BP, but then it just does nothing to Skarm, so thinking it's last move HP Fire. This time he gets him with Psychic. And he's correct again on this turn. It's a 50-50 every time Psychic or Giga Drain because you don't want a Psychic into the T-Tar. But he does manage to kill the Zapdos. Pulls back now, but it allows Blissey to get a soft boiled off. Nothing he can do to prevent that. So again, I don't love giving up the Dug Trio for Jabba, but what's done is done. So 5-4, to four, Jabba with the lead here, and he's also up a game. So if he manages to close this out, he will be in the winner's bracket with a nice clean 2-0. Calm mind on calm mind. Psychic playing around the roar. Might as well attack before you get roared out. Good play. And he does land a pretty nice chunk there. 32% with Psychic. And he does get roared out. Lovely Kiss going to miss on the Coon. Which is 
potentially really relevant if it's a non-rest coon or if you would have had a long sleep. And Malekith uses Waterfall. Did he forget what gen we're in? It flinches in Gen 4 and onward, but it sure as hell does not in Gen 3. The absolute only other reason I could think of for Waterfall is if he is ultra, ultra concerned with the Coon Mirror match to the point where he thinks it is worth losing the base power on Surf to get more uh, base PP. Surf being 16, Waterfall being 24. That is the only thing I can think of, and that seems ultra janky. I think this is just flat out a blunder, and he is confusing what gen that he's in, and he thinks that Waterfall is the ability to flinch, which in Gen 3 it does not, which is really fucking sloppy for Malekith. Come on, dude. But nevertheless, I think that's what's happening here. Uh, the Waterfall Coon, which is not a phrase I ever thought I would say in Callus Invitational Play, but here we are. The Waterfall Coon from Malekith seems to be a big problem, actually, for Jabba. It, uh... Now that it's got that many boosts, there's not really something Jabba can remove. I mean, he can obviously randomly find a crit with Giga Drain or with HP Grass or Thunderbolt or whatever from the Jirachi, but that's what's going to need to happen. If he doesn't find a crit, he's going to lose to this Coon, which is going to be so depressing for Jabba. The Waterfall Coon going to just take the wind right out of his sails. There's a crit, but it's not enough. Would need a crit with stab or with higher base power or something, but that did not do the trick. Now Tyranitar coming in trying to get the job done. Rest happens and rock slides. He's going to try to physically beat it down. He does not have roar, it seems. It's a DD Tar. All right, there's hope. Uh, he can get a rock slide, crit, or flinch here. And Malekith is not going to chance it, which I like. A very disciplined play for Malekith to not play that game when he's in an otherwise reasonable position and the Coon can come in later and maybe set up again. So Combine coming down for Celebi. Toxic, sure. Like I said, don't think it has VP. I think it's last move HP Fire, so the Toxic will force him out at some point. Goes for the Psychic anyway in case Flygon stays in, which of course it didn't. Blissey comes in and she'll get a soft boiled off here and we'll see how Jabba wants to respond to that. Ends up being the DD Tar, which is thrown DD Rock Slide, almost certainly going to have Earthquake. The real question is what is the last move on DD Tar? Can be HP Bug, can be HP Grass, can be Ice Beam, can be Double Edge, all sorts of shenanigans. Toxic coming down yet again on the Celebi. Gonna nail the Psychic there, pretty good, 44%. And a Specs drop that doesn't matter. And an over-prediction Earthquake for Malekith, thinking maybe he was going to double back to Tar, but that is not what happened. Now he doubles back to Tar, and now it's Bliss for Malekith, which is a matchup Jabba seems very content with. He's going to begin DDing up again, and now the Rock Resist, the Flygon, isn't there anymore. It's DD Lum, so he's going to get rid of the T-Wave. Goes Rock Slide here, and that's a crucial turn. Uh, if he were to crit or flinch there, this game is basically over, but Malekith avoids that, and then he dodges Rock Slide as well. Malekith catching some breaks here, two big turns in a row for him. He could have lost the Bliss and effectively the game, and he should have lost the Flygon there mathematically, but it didn't happen. However, the HP does follow up and get him, but not before Flygon gets relevant chip damage on Tar, enabling Malekith to revenge with his own Tar, leaving us in a 3-3 situation. Giga Drain coming down for Celebi, and Malekith has a DD Tower of his own. That seems like a huge issue for Jabba, given the circumstances. HP Bug kills Celebi, crit irrelevant there, and Jirachi, the only thing left for Jabba, is going to need an immediate crit and does not get it. DD Tower is going to clean up but not in the way that it looked like it might. It's not going to be Jabba's DD Tar. It's going to be Malakus DD Tar cleaning it up and sending us to a Game 3. And I just want to note real quick, not that it matters here, uh, but this team from Malakith also looks very vulnerable to Breloom. So 
maybe Jabba had the right idea with Loom. It seems... Yeah, I think that would have been quite difficult once again for Malekith had he opted for that. But he didn't. Just a note, just an observation. Anyhow, going to Game 3. There have been a lot of Game 3s in this opening round. Great to see. Shows you the parity in this tier and how evenly matched the top players are, which is just awesome to see, like I said. So here we are, Malekith and Trainer Orange. That be Jabba the Griffin for the third time. They're in the same positions, Malekith on the bottom, Trainer Orange is Jabba on the top, T-Tower lead for both, and that becomes a Salamence on a Claydol. Now it is a meta on a Coon. Man, I feel like there have been so many Suicune in the opening round of this tournament. I, I haven't kept track, I don't have the usage, usage statistics in front of me, but... I just, I feel like every set that I narrate has, like, a couple of them. I feel like it's getting used a ton in this tournament. Like, I mean, it's ob it gets used a lot in general. It's a staple in OU. But, I mean, like, even more than normal, I feel like it is everywhere in this tour. But maybe it's just all in my mind. Either way, uh, we have a double-boosted Coon here for Jabba, who has shown Combine Ice Beam Rest. So it's obviously going to be last move Surf or Hydro Pump, probably Surf. And the best thing Malekith can do right now is try to beat it with Blissey, but this is a losing fight, so he's going to have to at some point switch to a phaser or something else. Otherwise, the Coon can easily stall him out of PP here. Going to wake up and surf. Unexciting, even with two boosts that only does about a fourth, but, I mean, like I said, the Blissey not actually a solution here, so Jabba content to keep playing this game. Gets a third Calm Mind boost off as the Soft Boiled comes down, just in case Jabba had opted to attack, which he didn't. And he's going to rest at this point as the Blissey begins Seismic Tossing again. Here's the Skarm. Man, this looks like another Breloom vulnerable team for Malekith. Maybe Jabba should have brought Breloom all three games. Skarmory is going to avert the crisis here and bring out Rachi. He's going to miss Thunder as well, which is unfortunate. That would have done high damage, and it would have a 60-40 chance to land a potentially relevant Paralysis there. Tyranitar comes down. Substitute. And that's going to land a Thunder. Decent damage, but doesn't find the power, which probably would have been even more relevant than the damage, honestly. It's a Roar Tar, bringing out the Counterpart Tar. Interesting, so it's a Roar Tar from Malekith without lefties. That's unusual. Almost always, if it has Roar, it has lefties, but not the case here. Taunt from Jabba's Tar. Interesting, I mean, he taunted there to prevent spikes, but obviously there was a switch. Is it DD Taunt? Earthquake Taunt? Yeah, it might be lead, uh, it might be DD Taunt, which is an old set. It's interesting that he would lead with that, but I mean, I don't hate it. If you need to get sand up, you need to get sand up. Anyhow, uh, Metagross go for the mash here. Not a lot of damage. Doesn't get the raise. Who's going to get out of the way? Coon does not play around getting blown up on. He just stays in, goes for Calm Mind. There's Calm Mind number two. Seismic Toss coming at this point. Obvious rest turn for Jabba. See if he changes up and attacks. Nope. Just going to go with the straightforward play of resting and Blissey again going for S-Toss. Skarm was the answer last time. See if that's the answer again. Looks that way. Looks like Jabba will just kill both of his sleep turns before getting blown away. That's what happens. And it's going to show a new poke. Salamence. See what kind of mence it is. We saw that it does have lefties. So it's not going to be a choice bander. And he's going to go for Fire Blast. So putting two and two together, Fire Blast on a non-Choice Band variant, that's got to be a Mixed Mens for Jabba. And if there are any doubt about that, he's going to show Dragon Claw here as Blissey comes in. Back to Coon and back to Skarm. Coon is due to wake up on this next turn, see if he wants to just get an Ice Beam off and fish for a Freeze. I don't like the Surf. I like Ice Beam there. I would have fished for it. Uh, you don't really care about the spikes. You've got a clay doll. I think it's better to fish for a freeze than to get the surf off, but that's just my opinion. Either way, one layer is all Malekith wants right now. He's not going to get greedy and push for more. Rachi comes in. That's going to miss Thunder. 
Uh, that's going to be his second of three Miss Thunders, I believe, which is a little unlucky at 70-30, but obviously the move is just going to miss sometimes. And now Magneton coming in. Huh. Titar is going to be the answer to Magneton? Why not Claydol? Yeah, I guess he was worried about a hidden power or something. It is only at 51%. Oh, that's not what I thought it was. I thought we were looking at a DD Taunt Tire, but it's actually the Earthquake Taunt Toxic Rock Slide Tire, an old school set. Uh, DD Taunt... Yeah, I don't know. Pros and cons both ways, but I thought it was going to be DD, and evidently it is not. Either way, leaves us in a 5-5 five five situation when the Meteor Mash takes down the tire. Interesting that Claydol is the follow-up. I'm surprised he didn't go the Mixed Mence there. Mixed Mence seems really dangerous to Malekith. He has no switch in whatsoever. He's opted for a team without a bulky water, so I mean, it's prediction reliant, obviously, but if Jabba is able to nail his predictions, uh, the Mence is something that Malekith just does not have an answer for. It can do heavy damage every single time if that's what he wants to do. The Intimidate here, shooting Jabba in the foot. He's gotten a couple Earthquakes off on the meta, but he hasn't been able to close the deal because of the Intimidate. And now he's risking the Coon. Maybe he's trying to bait out a boom. Maybe he's going to double back to Rachi or something here, trying to get a boom. But nope, he's totally content to let his Coon get blown up on. It doesn't, but he obviously doesn't value it that much because boom is pretty obvious there. He gets a rest off now. The Magneton actually looks dangerous, depending on the last poke is for Jabba. And he goes to Dahl and gets it killed, so I guess we'll find out. Salamence going to be the follow-up. Interesting. So whatever it is, obviously isn't something that's going to be able to switch into Magneton very safely. But now Jabba with an opportunity to do some serious damage with the Mixed Men. So like I said, Malekith does not have a good switch. But unfortunately for Jabba, he's not able to make the right prediction. He goes for a Fire Blast here, as opposed to the Dragon Claw. And now, he does make the right prediction. He gets a Brick Break off against Blissey. However, he's got the Intimidate, so it does weigh less than it could. 32 after Intimidate is actually a pretty good chunk, but uh, not going to be enough. So, Salamence comes in again on Bliss. Don't know that I love that, but it ends up coming in on the Metagross thanks to a double switch, so that's really good. Has an opportunity to make a play here. And unfortunately does not make the right prediction. Brick Break there on Bliss would have been really good. But unfortunately he attacks what's in front of him and doesn't get there. Brick Break risky there. I wouldn't push it if I'm him. Ment seems really important. But he's going to push it. I don't like it. Malekith has not punished him yet. But man, Java's pushing his luck here. Goes for it again. Yep. That Ice Beam was going to happen eventually. I I don't like the way Java played that. It seemed totally unnecessary. Could have gone to Rachi or Kuhn totally safely there. And I think the Mence was clearly a big threat against Malekith. He does not have a good switch in for it. It can super effective anything on the other side. I think Java got really greedy there and did not need to give that up. And he's going to show a last poke zap here, which is interesting. Depending on the set, this could be a threat. It's going to have a hard time getting through the Blissey unless it randomly has HP fighting or, I guess, drill pack. But actually, ironically, if it did have drill pack here, it wouldn't be enough because of the Intimidate. So Malekith with the 4-3 to three advantage now. Not sure that I love the way that Jabba's played this game. I, I think giving up the Mence was almost certainly a mistake. He just got really greedy and kept pushing for it and hoping for a crit. I don't mind trying it once, but he pushed it too far. And, wow, Jabba really getting boned, too. This Rachi not cooperative for him. He's missed a bunch of Thunders this game. He got insta-crit by the Magneton after Calm Minding. It is unraveling quickly for Jabba. I think the Coon is going to be... Pretty much his only bet, and that's if it doesn't get blown up on by the Metagross. I think Jabba was in a good position at multiple points in this game. Multiple points in this series, frankly, but all of a sudden he's not. Oh boy. Drill pack nowhere near enough. 28% here. And I think this is the ball game. 
the coon is great, and if not for the explosion, it would have a chance to win, but I think Meta's just going to blow up on it, and I can't imagine what Jabba could do to prevent that. If it does, in fact, have explosion, which is certainly what he's representing, we're done here. And there's the boom. Kuhn going to go down, and Malekith going to take the set. Jabba obviously frustrated with the way that that went, but, I mean, it's a little bit of both. He did get unlucky there. But at the same time, I just I keep going back to the Mens. I keep harping on that. I don't think he needed to push the issue there with the Mens against the Bliss. And I think he got greedy and pushed his luck. And I think he got punished. And I think it was a mistake. I think the Mens would have been a big threat had he played a little more patiently and picked his opportunities. I think the Mens could have picked Malekith apart. As it stands, Malekith is going to win 2-1. to one. Jabba missed a lot of thunders, and I think in game two, like I said, I don't think Jabba needed to give up his dunk trio either. This did feel like a winnable set for Jabba. I think he did get unlucky, and I think he definitely could have won this, but wasn't perfect play on his end either. Uh, Malekith, like I said, he played fine, but I think all three of his teams were vulnerable to Breloom. Maybe this one less than the others with the Mens at least, but... All three of them seemed a little sketch against Breloom. Certainly, if I were his opponent in round two, I would really consider bringing a Breloom against him. <laughs> Anyhow, guys, I've narrated what feels like a million games tonight. At the time of this recording, it is two in the morning my time. I hope you guys appreciate my efforts, especially when I have a very long drive, three hours each way ahead of me tomorrow. I hope you appreciate me staying up and doing this, guys, because it is a lot of time and effort. Show me that you love me by leaving me a thumbs up. Would really appreciate it. And I will see you guys tomorrow with more content.